Hello Javas, and we are cruising through with four and while loops. This is a companion video to the last core concept in chunk one module five while loops. And this is an important core concept because we are pulling together several elements. This is a cumulative core concept. We are combining our skills with process diagramming, which you used for planning out your program during the last module and we are going to revisit the if control structure. Our goal here is to solve problems where we want to not just run a single block or a single line of code over and over again, but we want that code that is uh, looped to implement its own logic. In other words, it's going to be nested. And for the purposes of this exercise, I'm going to demonstrate with a very simple example that I walk through in the text, which is Let's imagine that we need a computer that can read in an age of the user and using logic determine whether or not that person, according to the Internal Revenue Service of the United States, can retire and start receiving Social Security benefits. That's a very simple check, but a very complicated way of saying, are you over 65 and a half? In flow diagrams, as you can see on, this, uh, on the screenshot, in flow diagrams, decisions are red diamonds and each of the arrows that come out that flow outwards from the red diamond represent a particular outcome of that logic. In our case, in Java, nearly every logic block will result in some statement being evaluated for truth or falseness, in which case truth or false will be emerging or coming out of that diamond. So for uh, the sake of keeping your head clear, I'm going to squish my screen down so that I can only see that top of my if logic. So if this were my program, this is the basic program that we start with. We're going to prompt the user for his or her or their age and we're going to take that value and we're going to compare it to 65.5 and then if their age is not over 65.5 we say keep working and if it is over then we say yay grab the newspaper and the martini. I'm going to solve the problem of implementing this logic over and over again if, for example, I needed to do this for a line of 30 potentially retiring people. I want to uh, not duplicate my if over and over again. I want to use a loop to control the passage over that many times. So to break this problem down, I'm going to code up the simple if logic. I'm going to get my component logic working first, solve the small problem first. So I'm going to slide this over to my other screen. You can't see that screen, but I can see that screen. And I'm just going to make a program. So my specification is user enters age, compare age to retirement min of 65.5, and then display output uh, telling user if he, she, they can retire. So that's a very simple three-step coding plan. Once again, I'm trying to practice good form with you on these coding videos, which is plan your code in English, please. Plan your code. Let's get an effect for this. Plan your code in English, please. And then you'll have a clear path through navigating the Java. And my kind of assumed first step is declare and initialize necessary variables. And this is usually where we start coding. I say, well, I need an int type. Uh, actually, wait. 65.5. I need a double. I need a double value called age. And I'm not going to initialize it to anything. Oh, no. I'm missing. I'm missing a main method. This is actually a legal statement, but we don't know why yet. So public static void main. There we go. I'm going to use shift alt down arrow to move my close for main, so close main, might as well label my class, and these puppies need to be indented. I'm selecting all those lines with shift up arrow, so shift up and down just as block select, and or multi-line select, and then tab will move all those in. I'm using control X to delete those extra lines. Okay, I need a double, I need an age. And I also need to store somewhere the actual or the legal retirement age. I'm going to declare that our practice is usually to put it first. We declare those final because 
they aren't going to change throughout the life of our program, throughout the execution of the program. So I can say final, um, uh, we'll say IRS ret age equals 65.5. Uh, I have to give it a type. Final. This is going to be also a double. Notice if I tried to declare that to be an int, it will say, ah, you can't put 65.5 in an integer. It's got a decimal place. There's nowhere to put that 0.5 in the integer containers. It's got to be in a double container. All right. Good. So in order to enter the user's age, I need a scanner. So let's go grab the scanner library book. Import Java dot util dot scanner so now I've got the book now I just have to use it so I'm gonna make a box that stores only scanner and in there I'm going to make a new scanner object I'm going to tell it please scan the system dot in which is the keyboard in our case excuse me that's semicolon alright now I'm gonna prompt the user that's when I didn't really need a, uh, a line for I know how to do that now Enter your age, please. Include decimal as needed. We'll assume they can do some base 10 math in their heads. We could also write a program that asks them how many months into the year were you born and you do the division. Or better yet, you ask them to type the name of the month. You convert the month to an integer, and then you divide that integer by 12 to calculate the double value. These are all fun things that you can do as a programmer. So where am I going to put the scanner's output? So I'm going to say my scanner next double. So this is the call to the scanner object. Go and get me the next uh, double value that the user enters. When I say next, that means they're going to push the enter key, and I want you to give me whatever they typed before that enter key. And I'm going to put it somewhere. Right now, the way this line of code is going to be interpreted is go get the double and then... Psh throw it off into the vacuum of space there's no we didn't put it anywhere so I'm gonna store it well we want to put it somewhere that we've named appropriately so store age in uh, store the double the user enters in age and then let's put together our if block so if okay let's think about this this is pretty easy so if age is greater than or equal to 65.5 then we will display, yay, um, head for the, where do you go when you retire? Uh, grab the next plane to Florida. I've been to Florida. I do not know why anyone would want to move there, especially not to retire. All right, so that's our basic if statement. So I like to work incrementally. I want to make sure that I am, have a generally error-free program as I move through the, the phases of my coding project. So I'm going to scan this. I'm going to finish some of my, my uh, commentary. I'm going to say demonstrates, uh, demonstrates nested logic in while loops. So let's go ahead and run it. If I get my expected output, I should be able to enter a number. If it's over 65.5 or equal to it, it should give me a value. Okay, that looks good. 89.3. Did that work as, as expected? Yes, I'm over the retirement age. I am sick. I'm three. Now, it didn't say you can't retire because I didn't program it. That would go in my else block. So I can come over here now and say else... So if you did not have a true evaluation of this expression, the compiler is going to skip over the contents of your if block and jump right into the contents of our else block, which is going to be a simple line that says, sorry, sorry, too young to chill. Now let's check it. Enter my age. Okay, enter my age. I'm three. Too young to chill. Run it again. Uh, 99. Does it work with really big numbers? Does it work with super duper big numbers? Oh my goodness. It's actually doing things that we wouldn't expect. Um, but that's cool. It'll still cope with a lot of things. 
Now, the problem here is if we have this computer sitting in the front hall of the IRS's retirement planning office, then we want any potentially old person to be able to walk right up to it and see if they can retire. We don't want to have to teach them how to hold down the shift key and tap F6 every time they want to check. We just want it to run the, ro run the logic again, ask the user again, and then uh, get the answer, give them the result, and then start over again. So that is my programming task. That's where the while loop makes a, uh, a fantastic re-entry into this little sequence, which is that is a nice loop set up for looping through any kind of chunks of code that I can include in a block. So let's jump back to my planning, my uh, use of the flowchart. So here was the logic for just the retirement checking. So what I really want to do is I just need to encapsulate or enclose that if block. Let me zoom out so I'm not making you dizzy. This if output. So basically we've done this and we just need to wrap the while loop logic or wrap the if logic inside the while. Now when I say wrap it in, this is an appropriate metaphor because we are transferring from the uh, flowchart into what's actually effectively nested computer code. Let me split my screen so we can see these side by side. That's a good idea, right? And um, so I can see if I want to nest these. Excuse me, let me just get this shut up. I think it's only one pixel wide. There it is. Beautiful. So I want the while block to open right before we prompt the user for the age. So I'm going to find that location in my source code. I'm going to clean up the blank lines as I go. I don't need to make a new scanner object every time I loop. So it needs to come before this line when we prompt and it needs to come after the scanner. Well, that's easy. We're going to put it in here. So I'm just going to just do the skeleton. I'm going to make a while loop and I'm going to hard code true in there because that will let me know that I will get inside the while loop block even if I haven't implemented my other logic correctly. So if it's true. Now this isn't while well, you can retire. This is going to be some sort of control mechanism. So we could say um, inside that I'm going to close my while curly brace. Now where is this going to end? See, I'm, I'm using my keyboard acumen to become a better programmer. If I hold down the shift and the alt key and then use the up and down arrows, I'm going to be scooting this line, the closing curly brace of while, I'm going to be scooting this up and down my code. Notice what I did. I just moved the closing curly brace of while underneath the end of the else block. So essentially my whole program, all of this, from prompting the if statement here to display keep working and to display grab the newspaper in our case of flight to Florida that's all enclosed in the while so this this flowchart return of saying when you get done displaying either get the get the newspaper go to Florida jump back up to that that while test and check to make sure we should do this again even if they have to keep working, both of those paths of logic wrap back up to while. There's not going to be any big line in the computer code, but that is effectively in our head what's going on. Go back to where you started. So this is an appropriate place to start my looping. Now my syntactical brain, my neat and tidy coding person inside of me says, I this is ugly because I know that there's stuff inside while so they need to be indented one indent deeper than the thing that encloses it. I'm going to select those lines and hit hit what what key tab the beautiful tab key. So that's all indented a little bit. We have seen the way that the infinite while loop works. We are uh, going to implement that here. Now it's not going to just ship out a gazillion lines like it did when we were counting but it's going to come back and it's going to pause when the compiler sees the next double method on the scanner it waits for a double this method holds up the whole show until the user types a double in so I shouldn't see anything crazy happen on my screen let's take a look 
That's a good sign. So we're inside. Enter your age, please. 23.2. Ooh, this is looking good. 23.3. Sorry, too young. And look, where'd this line come from? Enter your age. Oh, look, it's right here. So by examining the output of our program and carefully considering where each line came from, mapping them to source code lines, we can learn about a program that might even be doing things that are more complicated than we actually understand. That's the thing, fun thing about programming is that you're always doing things that are you know, little, little more than you understand, so there's new things to learn. We can spend a whole year studying the system object and how it actually works. There's always little mysteries. Okay, we've got some things to clean up. The first is, uh, so we're saying this is a good setup. This is an infinite loop. And I can do this forever and ever. What if I enter a negative number? Okay, it treats that as too young. That's good. We always want to try these edge cases. What about a really, really big negative number? Good, good, still working. You'll notice that my IRS retirement age final constant is grayed out. And if I hover over it, I get a tip that says variable IRS ret age is not used. Well, it wasn't used because I made the mistake of hard coding the 65.5. So let's imagine you do not know much about the United States tax law and you're reading this program and you see the number 65.5 sitting right there in the middle of smack dab in the middle of an if statement. There's no comment that tells me why 65.5 is in there. It just is sitting there. So that's a magic number effect. So what we did was we replaced or we named the number is essentially what we did. We named 65.5 IRS retirement age. And I'm going to teach you another trick. I can begin typing a variable name that I've already declared. And I can ask NetBeans to make sure that I'm on the right track. I held down control and I tapped space and that was the autocomplete. Now notice if I do I only, there's a couple of things that I might type that start with the letter I. And so it brought up this nice window of all the things that it thinks I might be trying to type with I. We're used to this on the internet, but it's even cooler when it's in programming land because this is based on what your program actually means. And it's not just a guess in the dark like the, like the robots online do. So I've uh, cleaned that up so that my code is more readable. I'm going to add my last couple comments. I, this is kind of yucky. Okay, so I already did that. There's my nice nested loops. Uh, this is not common to the not in the right place. I don't need that because it's self-explanatory. I'm going to say create new scanner object. I'm going to capitalize the S on scanner. Um, I'm going to make sure I comment this. Read in the input from the user and store in variable age. Brilliant. Okay. It's assumed that people know how to read an if statement. So we're looking good. Control F6, this is going. Notice if I enter text, <clears throat> exception in main, in thread main, input mismatch. It can't convert S1ZDFAS into a double value. It has no corresponding double value meaning, and we did not address that. We can in the future, but this is a simple program. Old folks are simple people. Let's keep it simple. The last thing we're going to think about is, well, how would we exit out of this? This is that infinite loop problem and we're not supposed to write programs that you have to force to shut down because that's uh, annoyance to the user that they should have to go to extra lengths to shut down a program. They should uh, use it and then when they're done using it, it should be easy to turn it off. Uh, the way we do that is we include a statement called a break statement. And let's take a peek at my flowchart that explains this. We've seen this before, so notice we are adding one more nested if statement inside of our while. I made you a nice tan box. All of this is inside the brackets, or the, excuse me, the curly braces for the while loop. So if they aren't eligible to retire, instead of just saying, nope, you can't, uh, you can't retire yet, the flow goes into another if statement. It flows into an if statement that's comparing the user's age with zero. And if they are under zero, we're going to treat that as a signal to stop the program because uh, we have not figured out what it would mean for someone's age to be negative. We can safely use that as a value that would never be meaningful in the program. Negative numbers for things that are counted or menu items, those are all nice ways to signal that negative one 
uh, or any negative value in this case, is the escape sequence or the escape method. So, only under those circumstances. If they're over 65.5, we've got a clear outcome. They can retire, tell them that, and then go back up to main. If they're not, they're either too young or they want to exit the program. And we have to address each of those, and that's what we just walked through. So we use that with the break statement. So I'm going to adjust the code that I just wrote. Let's zoom in. So uh, I'm going to add another print line. So I need to, let's make an English plan. So add prompt to end program. So I'm going to code there. And then I need to review my logic. Where did you go, logic? There. Um, prompt them for their age. If their age is greater than 65.5, then display that nice thing. So let's see how I did my um, my comparison. If age is greater than or equal to retirement age. So that corresponds with the uh, true version of my flowchart. Grab the next plane to Florida. Good. You can retire. So this other if statement, when I'm seeing that false arrow come out of that first if uh, diamond, you can think of that as the else block of the if statement. That's the false block. The else block is the false block. And so let's jump back to the code and see how we would put that in. So we can say else. Now there's a neat structure. We can say else if age, what's the, what's this say? Age is less than zero then if it's true, this if here is going to be our break statement. Immediately when the compiler sees break, it jumps to the outside of the current loop. In this case, it's while. So when it hits break, it's going to skip executing anything else that follows it until the end of the uh, curly brace for the loop in which it is contained. So it jumps into, we would say, the outer, outer space of its current loop. Sometimes we have multiple nested looping structures, and that's great, but we don't have that right now. So we still need to figure out where we're going to tell the user that they're too young. And I think that that needs to go in our final else block. I'm going to drop that down. So in other words, if they're over 65 and a half, they're good to go. Under zero, they want to leave. And by deduction, we're saying they're too young. So we separated out the high and the low end of the range, and we deduce if you're neither high nor low, you're in the middle, and that means you're too young to retire. And uh, I like to give a little user prompt to make them feel good about our program. Uh, you, thank you, thank you so much. We're using um, can using can I retire yet? Cool. All right, that wraps up our core concept videos. Well, as soon as I can get that um, to work, let's run it one more time. All right, enter your age as a decimal. I am 89. Yay! Oh, look. I made a goof. Did you see my uh, exit statement? Thank you so much for using Can I Retire. I didn't want that to pop up during the looping. I wanted that to pop up after the user enters a negative number. You can see that's why we debug. So I see, ah, yes. Yeah, see, I didn't label my curly brace as well. This is the close of our chained if statement. And the while closes here. I needed this print line to be after the while. And so I need to open that up. And it is uh, so we can make a flag here. Uh, statement given after user submits termination code. Neg number. Okay, now let's save it. Now let's run it. 23, too young. Sorry, too young to chill. 
Enter your age, include the as a decimal. All right, fifty six, forty five point four. Still too young. Ninety, eighty eight point eight hundred eighty eight point two. Very old. Okay, we seem to be working. Can I escape negative one? Hey, that's cool. What if I run it again and say negative gazillion? All right, so we're working as expected. We have implemented a cool program that nests if if logic inside of a while statement to repeatedly implement a branching system in a Java program. And with that, you are ready for your learning exercises and then finally your module challenge to build a quiz program. And that'll do it. Have fun.